Okay, today we're going to talk about why language, although really brilliant, can sometimes stand in our way of having a really meaningful uh, life and an easy life. So I want you to imagine for a minute that you go off to work or school in the morning and it's a beautiful sunny day and you've locked the door and gone to work. And then about halfway through the day it starts to pour down rain. And you're sitting at work and you're kind of really glad that you're inside because it's pouring down rain. When you get home, your poor puppy has been sitting outside in the rain and he's drenched. He's shivering and he's so cold because you locked him out in the rain. And it was going to be okay because it was going to be a sunny day, but then it started to rain. What does he do when you open the door and he comes running in? Probably shakes off a little. But is he happy to see you? Probably. Is he going to lick you and jump on you and be really excited? Probably. So now I want you to have a think about if your mum or dad or your husband or wife left the house in the morning and locked it and you were locked out. And you were sitting outside, you couldn't get in your house and it started to rain. And if you think about how long your mum or dad or your partner goes to work for, it's a few hours. So you're sitting out in the rain, drenched and shivering and thinking about it the whole time. And when whoever it is that locked you out gets home and opens the door, when you walk into the house, how do you react? You're probably going to yell at them. Maybe you'll storm off and go into your room and slam the door. And how long does that last for? It'll probably go for a while. You might not, you know, depending on what kind of person you are, you might not talk to your mum for a week. Um, you might yell, continue to yell at them. Um, you're going to probably get really angry or really sulky um, and react um, quite badly, I guess. If you think about why that happens, it's really to do with your language. So our ability to use this brilliant thing that dogs can't use has actually stood in our way of having a good relationship and getting over that thing that happened. Um, so you've kind of used your language to label the person that locked you out. So you've gone, okay, they're a bad mom or a bad partner because they've done that to you. Uh, you've used your language to think about all of the times that they've done something bad to you in the past and you've rolled that all up into one. You've also decided that pr to predict the future and say, okay, I don't want this to ever happen again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure they know how angry or sad I am about this. So you react with your emotions as well. And this is something that the dog can't do. The dog stays in the present moment all the time. It can't think about the future. It doesn't think about the past. It's just so happy that you're there in that present moment. And who do you think feels better in that moment? Do you think you felt better reacting like you did? Or do you think the dog feels better? So what I want you to do in this next little while is start maybe thinking a little bit more like a dog, less in your mind and more in the present moment, less in the past and present, like future and just all over the place and start to really live in the moment and notice some of the things that dogs get really excited about and the reaction of anger probably didn't get you very far whereas the reaction of forgiveness and happiness for the dog um, probably worked really well for them.